Welcome everyone to Industrial Control Technology. My name is Peter Sherwood and I'm one of the many instructors dedicated to the success and development of this program. First we will be discussing what the course covers for electrical, instrumentation, we'll look at potential employers, potential career paths, and typical salaries to be expected. Industrial Control Technology offers an in-depth study of how to repair, maintain, calibrate, adjust, and install industrial measuring and control equipment. A technologist once employed in a maintenance role will be responsible for keeping the control system operating properly by repairing, maintaining, calibrating, and adjust, adjusting industrial measuring and control equipment. So you're going to keep the plant running. During this course, the students will learn about electrical systems and equipment. They will look at things such as AC and DC motors, how to speed up and slow down these motors with drives, how to stop, start, forward, reverse. They will also learn about AC alternators, as that is how most of electrical energy is developed, and the students may possibly be working in generating stations. They'll look at DC generators, how they're constructed and work, transformers to step up and step down voltage, distribution equipment, starting right at the main service entrance into large switch gear, panels, and disconnects. They'll look at circuit breakers and fuses, how they're constructed, the different types and designs. They'll work with motor control centers, everything needed to control motors and protect our motors. They'll work on electrical circuits, series, parallel and complex circuits, both AC and DC. They'll work with programmable logic controllers, the equipment and computers needed to control systems and products. They'll work with control devices, such as switches, proximity sensors, all the things needed to assist in controlling machinery and equipment. This course also covers an in-depth study of instrumentation. What instrumentation involves is controlling any process by measuring it for certain variables like flow, pressure, and temperature, using those measurements to go to a computer-based controller that can make a decision what to do with those measurements send a signal out of the controller to a control device like a valve or a motor to open or turn on and change or influence our process. So let's think of a nice simple process making some fudge. Fudge would take um, certain ingredients need to go into the fudge, certain uh, temperature needs to be maintained so we don't burn the fudge, and you would have to mix up the fudge as well. So a few actions need to take place here and we could do all of this automatically through instrumentation control. We would have measuring devices to read the temperature of our fudge and we'd also have measuring devices on the pipes coming in to the process, our fudge, measuring the flow of material coming in. These measuring devices are connected to our controller. So when we hit the start button, the controller will tell the valve to open and allow some product to come into our process. The measuring devices are constantly measuring the amount of product coming in and when it sees the correct amount, the controller will shut off the valve or close the valve stopping the product from coming in. The controller then could turn on the heating element to start heating up the process and also turn on a mixing motor. The measuring device for temperature would be reading the temperature of the process, constantly sending that signal to the controller. So the controller is always looking at the temperature. When the temperature starts to climb up to our desired temperature, the controller will send a signal to the heating element turning down the temperature for the process. 
so we can maintain our desired temperature that way. And the mixer valve is constantly mixing up this process controlled by the, the, the controller. So this process would continue until the fudge was complete. So that is kind of the short and skinny on instrumentation control. It definitely goes into much more complex systems than that. But during the time that students are in this program, they're going to study, work with, and connect all of these measuring devices to different processes. Where they're also going to interconnect these measuring devices to controllers, program the controllers, set in the parameters, connect the controllers to final control devices like valves and motors, and make those changes to the process. Any system that uses instrumentation needs industrial control technologists to properly calibrate all these measuring devices, calibrate these controllers, and set up these final control devices to work properly with our process. Some of the potential employers that you will encounter, the, some of the bigger ones I guess here would be Irving Oil, Pulp and Paper, their tissue, wallboard, also MB Powers generating stations like Point Lepro, Colson Cove, Mactaquac, and Baldoon, Moosehead Breweries, Nakawick Mill, Connor Brothers, Ganong's Chocolate, City of St. John, and many, many more. Any industry that's trying to create some form of product needs industrial control technologists. The different types of careers you could encounter. One direction is becoming an instrument mechanic tech. Typically, they install, connect, calibrate, and maintain all equipment associated with the process measurement and control. Things like our measuring devices, the controllers, and the final control devices that we talked about. So they're going to keep the plant running for anything associated with process measurement and control. You could also go down the path of industrial electrician who typically installs, connects, and maintains all electrical equipment associated with the entire process. Things like motor control centers, programmable logic controllers, all the distribution equipment needed for the, for the plant to operate, electrical motors, starters, and drives, and all the interconnecting wiring needed throughout the process. So again, the industrial electrician also needs to keep the plant running. When machinery breaks down and it's an electrical fault, they need to get on it and get it running again. Some may become both an instrument mechanic and an industrial electrician, depending on the place of employment. Also, many become foremen and supervisors of electrical and instrumentation departments. This is because along with all the technical information they learn, they also learn computer skills, communication skills, a good solid understanding of trade related math and sciences, and the ability to prioritize job and have time management skills. Technologists may also be employed into technical sales or system design companies. They will be required to assess the needs of a customer and supply a system to meet those needs. This course is a co-op program, which means the learners will have the opportunity for four months each academic year to work for future employers. Co-op salaries are in the range of $16 to $17 per hour. Starting apprenticeship industry salaries once graduated are in the range of $40 to $50,000. And once licensed, journeyman salaries are seventy to one hundred thousand dollars a year. Both the industrial electrician and instrument mechanic involve a five-year apprenticeship. Once you've graduated, the learners will have an opportunity to challenge their third-year apprenticeship block for both industrial 
and their instrumentation license. This is because the courses offered during this program align with the third year apprenticeship blocks. This course covers an in-depth study of today's industry, electrical, and instrumentation needs and is only offered in St. John, New Brunswick. So if you're a serious, committed learner that is looking for a serious, committed, fast-paced, high-tech, and hands-on career that involves critical thinking, this is a course for you. So please contact your recruitment officer today and sign up. Thank you for your consideration of this course.